Thanos the Mad Titan does not give out respect easily. The big purple bad has spent years devastating and tormenting the Marvel Universe in the comics, and recently dusted the hell out of the MCU on the big screen. Sorry, spoilers, but you really should have seen Infinity War by now. It's your own fault, really. Regardless of what form of media is your favorite way to take in the Mad Titan, it's undeniable that Thanos, a class A egomaniac with undiagnosed narcissist personality disorder, has a tough time empathizing with his victims. But there are a few exceptions. Several superheroes have managed to earn Thanos' respect, despite him still viewing them as an enemy or a threat. So today we are counting them down with our picks for the top 10 superheroes Thanos respects. We're going to be bouncing between both the MCU version of Thanos and the comics for this one, friends. So with that in mind, let's get to it. And at number 10, Captain America. In the MCU, Captain America's sheer persistence and effort in the fight against the Mad Titan is not something that is lost on Thanos. This is something that is taken directly from the Infinity Gauntlet comic. When Adam Warlock rallies the superheroes of Earth to take the Mad Titan on, Captain America, despite knowing he's overpowered, still chooses to take Thanos on directly in order to save humanity. In the comic, he tells Thanos, I quote, As long as one man stands against you, Thanos, you'll never be able to claim victory. To which Thanos responds, Noble sentiments from one who is about to die. Cap then replies with, I've lived my life by those sentiments. They're well worth dying for. Aww. Up next, number 9, Star Lord. In the MCU, right before Thanos teleports away with Gamora in search of the Soul Stone, Peter Quill, aka Star Lord, makes a mighty attempt to prevent Thanos from getting his way by keeping his promise to Gamora, which was to kill her so that Thanos will never find out where the stone is. Unfortunately for Quill and Gamora, Thanos, having already collected a few of the stones by then, which also included the Reality Stone, is able to warp reality and change Peter's ammunition into bubbles. Despite not really seeing Quill as a threat, he definitely respects the fact that he had the will to pull the trigger on the woman he loves, doing what is necessary even if it was difficult, just like how Thanos sees himself in his own quest. The hardest choices require the strongest will. He also notes that he likes him, referring to him being Gamora's boyfriend before disappearing altogether. In at 8, Namor. The Submariner is one of the biggest characters in Marvel Comics to have yet entered the MCU fray. While there's been plenty of speculation online as to whether this will ever actually happen, one thing is for sure, we definitely won't be seeing him in Avengers Endgame. The character does have a history with Thanos though in the panels, specifically during the Infinity Story event, the 2013 crossover in which Thanos decided to attack Earth while the Avengers had their hands full with the alien threat of the Builders. It leads up to Thanos searching for his long lost son, Thane, who ultimately defeats him in the end. So how does Namor tie into this? After Thane traps Thanos in a pocket limbo stasis, Namor is the one who frees the Mad Titan, having joined his cabal in order to destroy other worlds. Unfortunately, Thanos' new lease on life doesn't last long. He ends up getting killed by God Emperor Doom on Battleworld shortly afterwards. But hey, gotta hand it to the OG anti hero and sometimes villain Namor for helping a mad Titan in need. And at number 7, Spider Man. Peter Parker partook in the battle on Titan in Avengers Infinity War in the MCU and really held his own with the best of them. And their plan would have worked too if it wasn't for that stinking Star Lord. Aside from that interaction, Spidey hasn't really had much one on one time with a big purple lug on the silver screen. But in the comics, Spider Man has crossed paths with Thanos on multiple occasions. In 1991's Infinity Gauntlet, Spider Man literally kicks Thanos in the face, despite losing that battle. Spider-Man then played a key role in Jim Starlin's 2002 Infinity Abyss, fighting off several clones of Thanos and distracting the Mad Titan. But perhaps the most significant Thanos Spider-Man encounter is their very first, in Marvel 2-in-1 Annual Issue 2, in which Spidey and the Thing team up to rescue the Avengers from Thanos' space fortress. Spider-Man catches the Mad Titan by surprise and ignites a brawl, which ends with Peter finding the Soul Gem and releasing Adam Warlock, who turns Thanos into stone. Considering he's been a reoccurring foe of the Mad Titans, one who has managed to hold his own in various different scenarios, it's safe to assume that when it comes to characters in the panels, it's very likely that Thanos holds some sort of respect for the web slinger. And at number 6, Doctor Strange. From comics to movies, let's take a look at Doctor Strange in the MCU. Another character who partook in the battle on Titan against the big purple threat, it's not just Doctor Strange's skills in combat or his mystical mastery that Thanos respects. It's the fact that he handed over the Time Stone to Thanos as a means of rescuing Tony Stark's life. A man willing to barter with someone the likes of Thanos is ballsy friends. There's no doubt that Thanos considers Strange to be a worthy adversary, despite being extremely more powerful than the Sorcerer Supreme. Also, how could you not respect the Sorcerer Supreme? That title just screams clout. In at 5, 
Thor. Another look at the MCU at this number. At the end of Infinity War, right after Thanos snapped his fingers and turned half of all living things to dust, spoilers again, you should have watched it, he was still met with a fun little surprise. Thor's brand new toy, Stormbreaker, stuck right into his chest. Bold move, God of Thunder. While the blow could have theoretically killed the Mad Titan, it didn't. To which Thanos grins and tells the Asgardian god that he should have aimed for his head. He then uses the gauntlet to get the hell out of there, much to Thor's dismay. Thor has proven that he can be a threat to Thanos. Even if Thanos feels that, with all the stones, he's a manageable one. Plus, Thor wrecked a huge chunk of his army in that final battle when he arrived on the scene. And surely, the Mad Titan's got to respect a warrior with that kind of skill. In at 4, Scarlet Witch. Scarlet Witch is by far one of the most powerful characters in the Marvel Universe. Not only in the comics, but also in the MCU. Now she hasn't unlocked all of her powers just yet, not having full control over them, and perhaps that's something we'll see play out more in detail in her upcoming show on Disney's streaming service. But for now, in regards to how Thanos sees the Red Witch, considering what she's capable of, there's no doubt that he holds some sort of respect for her. He also straight up acknowledges her attempts to prevent him from getting the Mind Stone. Killing Vision proves she has major gusto, that's for sure. It's the whole, hardest choices require strongest wills ideology of his coming into play again. And considering the scope of Wanda's powers, despite her not fully being in control of all of them, is something that Thanos surely, with almost all the stones in his possession, can sense and appreciate. In at 3, Iron Man. This one should not be much of a surprise. The two characters are integrally tied together in the MCU. Stark being a futurist has long anticipated a threat like Thanos. And as Joe Russo, who co-directed and co-wrote Infinity War has stated, I quote, It's lived in his brain even though he couldn't name it. Tony is the most desperately driven, down to the core, to react to something like Thanos. I think that is intrinsic to Tony's psychology. And because Tony started it all with Iron Man, he has a special connection to the threat that's facing him. This is something that definitely hasn't gone beyond Thanos. Their existential connection of sorts comes to a head in Infinity War, to a point where, after their fight on Titan and Tony almost giving his life in an attempt to stop Thanos, the Mad Titan says, you have my respect, Stark. He also respects that Tony and him have similar goals, despite having extremely opposite means. Both want to save people. Iron Man will do it by, you know, ending Thanos, and Thanos will do it by eliminating half of all living things in order to ensure the galaxy is balanced and the resources aren't depleted. Yeah, two very different ideologies there. In at number 2, Captain Marvel. While we're anticipating a major throwdown between Thanos and Carol Danvers' Captain Marvel, which surely will lead to him at least acknowledging that she's the strongest superhero from Earth that he's ever faced, Thanos, as of this recording, has yet to encounter her. But there is a different Captain Marvel that he has encountered in the comics that he does hold a lot of respect for. We're talking Marvel, the first to wear the Captain Marvel mantle. Thanos and Marvel have had a long history of being foes. When Thanos was attempting to get his mitts on the cosmic cube, Marvel was one of his fiercest opponents. And even managed to defeat the Mad Titan. Their history runs so deep that by the time Marvel died of cancer in 1982, Thanos actually appeared to him at the end of his life in a vision, alongside Death, coming to guide him into the afterlife. He gives Marvel the illusion of a final struggle so that Marvel can die fighting. He then walks with Marvel and Death into a blinding light. Don't think that there's many previous foes out there that Thanos has had that he would do that for. And finally, in at number one, Adam Warlock. Perhaps the only other foe that Thanos has shown as much respect for as he has Marvel is none other than Adam Warlock. Who comes in at our number one spot? Adam Warlock, a cosmic being, is one of the only characters that manages to be a threat to Thanos in the comic. The heroic onslaught on the Mad Titan in the Infinity Gauntlet comic was birthed from Warlock being the mastermind, attempting to save the universe. He had a plan, and he knew just how to play Thanos. And it wasn't just superheroes from Earth that he managed to recruit either. He had Eternals on his side and even other cosmic powers and entities. Hell, even the Watcher was so darn intrigued that he had to get a front row seat for the show. And when it comes to Thanos, Warlock has tangoed with the character many a time. They fought. A lot. In addition to that, not only has he proven that he can manipulate the Mad Titan in Infinity Gauntlet, but he also sees right through him, calling him out on his crippling self doubt and the fact that Thanos knows, deep down, he isn't worthy of the power he seeks. He can get under Thanos' skin, no one else can, with maybe the exception of death perhaps. And in recent times, they've even teamed up, like when they went to go see The One Above All. Talk about a buddy comedy in the making. Needless to say, with power and abilities like Warlocks, and the fact that Thanos has even worked alongside him in the past, just goes to show how much the Mad Titan actually respects him, even if they are each other's arch nemesis for the rest of eternity. Alright, there we have it friends, what other superheroes do you think Thanos respects? Give us a shout in those comments below and let us know. If you dug this video, spread the love, hit that like button, and hey, why not subscribe? We'd love it if you stuck around with us some more. In the meantime though, thanks for watching friends, I'll catch you all in the next video.